In the third module of our Pandas tutorial, we are going to learn about group by aggregate, pivot, pivot table, merge, concat, melt, transpose, idx min, and idx max. I am Saurav Agarwal. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In the previous two modules of our Pandas tutorial, we learned about the basics of Pandas, creating series, data frame, iterating through them, indexing them. We also learned about some of the attribute level functionalities such as describe, is na, drop na, to date time, time delta, map, apply, n largest, n smallest, group by, bear. Hello and welcome. We shall first begin by importing our pandas library as pd. Then we shall upload our file csv file to the runtime of google colab. Okay. By using this file we shall perform certain operations such as group by aggregate, pivot, pivot table. Okay. Let us now import this file into our workspace. How do we do that? Using read csv because this is a csv file and we pass the relative path of this file. The shape of this file is 2000,21. We have 2000 rows and 21 columns and the column names are as here. Okay. Next, we shall convert the attributes or columns which are basically categorical type but are present as integral data types into object types. This will help us perform some of the operations that we are looking to hereby perform. After converting our 4G, 3G, dual SIM, touch screen, price range into object types, we can we shall call our info. Okay. Let us see what this gives us, what information does it provide. We know that info gives us a metadata relative to our columns or attributes in our data frame. So now we see those types where which we convert to object type have their D types mentioned as object. Okay, so our function worked successfully. Next, what we'll do is we'll filter a subset of these attribute or columns for our computations. Again, why we are doing this? To make our things simpler and to help us understand better. Understanding by based on the computation for all 21 columns can be a bit complex. So we know now we go ahead and understand group by and aggregation. So in the previous module, we already learned what group by is. It is basically grouping your data frame based on the certain categories or certain levels of a attribute or column. Okay. AGG or aggregate. AGG is just the alias for aggregate method and we will use AGG here and we will also use AGG in combination with group by. So let us first see what are the different unique values in RAM. Okay. What we are doing here, we are grouping our data frame based on touch screen. Touch screen has two values, 0 and 1, whether the touch screen is present or absent. And we aggregate the data that belongs to say category 0 of touch screen. What we are doing? The RAM of that data frame, we are computing the median. And for the memory, int memory, we are computing the mean. So what aggregate function or AGG function does is it aggregate or it combines the data from, for a particular series and performs a computation over the entire series. Okay. So here, let's run this command. What we'll find is, see, we have two different values for touch screen, 0 and 1. The, we computed the median for RAM when touch screen is 0, we computed the mean for int memory when touch screen is 0. Similarly, we computed them when touch screen is 1. Now here you would see that we computed the aggregation on different columns, okay, RAM and int memory. What if you want to compute the aggregation, different aggregations on the same column? Say for example, you find, want to find the median as well as mean of RAM. Okay, so how do we do that? Again, in the aggregate method, what we do is we first pass the name of the column that we want to provide in our updated data frame. Okay, we give an equal to sign 
and within parenthesis we pass the name of the column and the name of the method similarly the avg ram we pass ram the column name and the mean which is the method name it is very simple to understand if you just go to the documentation you'll be able to figure it out let's go to the documentation and see how how easy and how simple things are okay uh, we'll first go to the we opened that pandas documentation we went to the api reference here under data frame we'll go to group by and aggregate let's see where is agg okay here we find agg okay so you see we pass the function axis function could be a simple function object string list or dictionary okay just visit the documentation whenever you find any confusion whenever you face some difficulties and these documentations will help you understand things very simply it's very simple to understand and follow up also like if you want you can put it down in the comments below and let me know so that i can add more clarity to it okay. now coming back to our pivot and pivot table next is like what do we mean by pivot and pivot table say for example you have a data frame you want to change the view of that data frame by view of it i mean say for example you have a record of a cricket match wherein you have comparison over by over the runs scored by each team over and over so you have the columns one column is the run scored the other column is the over number the third column is the team name so how would that look like let us just construct a dummy data here let's wait a second hmm. yeah so here what we'll do is we'll say crick okay we create a data frame pd dot data frame we take the columns as runs let's say the runs code are 10 9 8 10 3 5 7 3 0 okay we have 3 4 5 6 7 8 values here over num number of the over 0 1 2 sorry it ain't like 0 1 2 3 4 then again 1 2 3 4 okay next is team name say england 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 and then we have australia 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 now we'll do print crick dot shape see we have the data frame created we'll just display this data frame crick okay so we see we have the runs scored we have the over number and we have the team name however if you see this information is repetitive here if you find the over number and actually you won't want to see a data frame or a structure when you could compare the run code by each team. So what we do, we change the layout of this data frame using pivot and pivot table. I'll tell you the difference between, I'll tell you the difference between pivot and pivot table, but just first go through the terminologies, basic syntax. What we'll do here is we'll take data frame dot pivot. Okay we'll have to specify an index. We may or may not specify an index. We can just give columns. What we want to set the columns, we want to set team name as the columns. The values that we want to pass in that new data frame is the runs. And the index that we want to give is over num. Okay. See, now we have the over number, one, two, three, four. We have the team names australia england and the corresponding runs code for each over this makes much more sense right this data frame is giving us a better view of what the things look like 
let us now see the construct for the pivot table okay bear with me we will understand why we need both pivot and pivot table and what are the underlying differences between them okay here also we pass the columns as team name values as runs index as over num okay here we have an additional parameter agg func which helps you aggregate over the series that you are providing here since we are having just one value we don't need this agg func we'll just see how things go without the agg func you see this is going the same absolutely the same now let us create another data frame okay we'll now see the difference between pivot and pivot table uh, let's create a data frame c p d dot data frame let's say again i create let's create the same data frame and we'll just add one more column here okay let me say click one and we'll add so a suitable column to add would be we'll add here innings okay so innings would be this would be the first and second okay so we added all our values to our data frame now let's see what our data frame looks like the shape is this click one okay now we have the data frame here as follows now if we apply pivot on this innings okay what happens click one dot pivot we have the columns as team name we have the values as runs what we want to find is we want to find the pivot table based on the in innings we are setting the innings as our index let's see what happens now here we get an error why do we get an error because we are trying to set an index innings here which is a duplicate entry say for all the runs code any runs code runs 10 and 9 the innings id would be 1 okay the index id would be 1 though the overs are changing but here that information is not present now if we take pivot table what will happen is we can use agg func and call the sum operation what will happen is we'll get the sum or the innings score if you see the first innings australia was not there england was batting the total score was 37 in the four overs and in the second innings australia was batting and the total score was 15. so this is the difference between pivot and pivot table while pivot helps you to realign your data set based but it does not allow you to aggregate pivot table gives you an added advantage of aggregate we'll just see how pivot could have worked in this scenario where we could just bypass the duplicate index so we don't provide index in that case and we'll simply have the data frame if you see the in these index names index corresponds to our actual data frame in this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and we have the corresponding values for the innings 0 innings 1 and the other values are filled with none so we also have fill na attribute which could which you could utilize and fill those values where we have none all these different attributes are there you can go and check mar margins drop in a okay just what is the underlying idea of learning this pandas or any module in python just go and explore the documentation it's very rich and clearly explained and simple to understand additionally if you face confusion you can just drop it down in the comments now before moving ahead i would like to bring forth once again before all of you to make sure to attempt the assignment questions present at the end of each module this will help you prepare for the interviews in pandas and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe smash the like button share it with the friends and data science enthusiasts now let us continue
earlier we saw like how to pivot and pivot use pivot table say for example we consider the example here where we have runs over num team name we pivoted this and we had a data frame such as this how do we unpivot our data frame our pivot data frame is this where upon resetting index we have the columns as over num or the name of the team england the name of the team and the corresponding runs scored so how do we unpivot it using melt method of pandas so in the melt we first pass the pivoted data frame we pass the id vats which would be our our column corresponding to which we want to elongate or form a long form of data frame value vats would be the corresponding values that we want to have or the variables that we want to have corresponding to our elongated form and the value name we have passed runs let us see what happens when we do this so the output of this would be the over num which is our id vats we have 1 2 3 4 and 1 2 3 4 why because our value words is two values australia and england which correspond to our team names here os 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 ing 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 and the corresponding runs okay if you do not give value words name then it would have a name as value or for the column okay this is a very useful when we want to convert a wide form of data frame into a long form of data frame just play around with it and see how it goes okay next up we'll see how do we formulate the con how do we next we will see the concatenation operations and the merge operations in pandas okay we will understand what is the primary difference between concat and merge and what is join here okay so first of all considering our data that we already have in a train dot csv it is having 2000 rows and seven columns we just take subset of this data frame across to have an understanding of how our concat function works okay so we take one data frame df1 we first filter the first 100 rows of our data frame df we take second data frame df2 we'll filter the second 100 rows of our data frame df Okay, so if you see the index of data frame one and data frame two, data frame one index starts from zero to hundred, and it the second it starts from hundred to two hundred because we are not changing the index. We are just sampling rows from our original data frame, so our original indexes are also preserved. Next, we concat. So when we concat, we pass the data frames in in a, a list or in a list comprehension form. now concatenation operation takes place along the axis specified here if by default the axis is 0 if we specify one that would concatenate along the columns axis 0 is by default for indices so here on axis 0 if we do concat what will happen we'll get a data frame with the 200 rows of the concatenated and it is just index concatenating along the indices 0 1 2 3 4 up till 100 okay one of the reasons con, one of the primary thing that happens with concat is it does not by default take into consideration for any duplicacies that might occur as a result of concatenation we'll see in some time how that occurs say for example this concatenated data frame df3 we consider and we take df1 we concatenate we know that df3 contains the concatenation of df1 and df2 so df3 already contains df1 now if we concat df1 and df3 again so df1 would be duplicated in df in the concatenated data frame d underscore which we can find as d underscore dot index dot value counts if we see the rows corresponding to or the index values corresponding to df1 are duplicated right if you see this is true so duplication is not taken into consideration in concat operation by default let us take another example to concatenate along the columns when we take axis equal to 1 so if you see here again when we are concatenating along axis 1 the column names for example int memory we have int memory repeated touch screen 4g 3g so even the columns are repeated okay even though their values would not be same because here we are indexing base the index is also considered and the corresponding indexes are matched across the columns say for index 0 okay of df1 
we did not have any value corresponding to index 1 in df2 okay so that particular field would be marked as nan or missing we can just overwrite it by resetting indexes but just for, for the sake of understanding this is how it works okay let us take another example if we do a join method if we call a join method in some time we'll see what joins are what are the various types of joins join is a concept which has been taken from databases and is very useful when we talk of data frames because the underlying structure between the data frame and a database sql database tabular database is very similar okay so if we say join as inner so we are getting a null data frame why because none of the indices none of the indices in the two data frames that we are concatenating are matching therefore there is no inner join or no intersecting field intersecting row between the two data frames join would actually con consider that axis which is not specified here here join considered the indexes for matching because we specified axis 1 if we specify axis 0 join would consider the columns for the matching again i advise you to just play around with some of these datas you will have the link to this notebook in the description play around so that you have a, a sense of how things work okay just having an understanding of what a method is gives you a great advantage when you want to solve a particular problem but unless and until you go ahead and play it yourself play with the method play with the by modifying the data you will not have an underlying gist of what is happening okay so play around with it there is also a link which you can go and check out okay this link would correspond to some of the methods and guides corresponding to merge join concatenate op operations you can just go ahead and see see how things are working in a visual format as well okay very good next one thing to understand it concat always does a full copy of the data so whenever you are calling concat it can cause a performance hit because every time the data is duplicated or copied okay the entire data frame is copied now before moving ahead to the merge operation i want you to understand the perf uh, underlying principle behind joins there are primary four types of joins left join right join inner join outer join on top of that there is a cross join which is which is a cartesian product between the two data frames okay we'll see in a while how it works let us consider two data frames left and right we have three columns in the left data frame and we have four columns in the right data frame okay so the key corresponds to our basic identifier in the data frame it could be anything we are just taking here an example so key for data frame left has a b c d e column 1 has certain values column 2 has certain values we have kept column 2 in our right data frame however the values are modified or changed key has values a c e g and i so some of the keys overlap while some do not we have two additional columns here column 3 and column 4 left data frame looks something like this we have the key column 1 column 2 right data frame looks something like this now first of all we'll perform an inner join so inner join is you can understand inner join from the set per theory as intersection between two sets so whenever we perform intersection what it will check is it will check what are the matching fields or what are the matching values based on the key that we are having so here what we do is we call pd dot merge left right on key key is the column name that we want to check for matching this key should be present in both the data frames the left and right data frames on which we are merging we want to have an inner join and we are giving suffixes we'll understand what suffixes would be in some time okay so the key now we know that inner join is an intersection on key so what are the intersecting values for key column in left and right we know a c and e intersect between the two while b d do not similarly in other g i do not okay so what is the result we have a c and e the intersection between the key of left data frame and the key of right data frame and the corresponding values for the two data frames are added here now 
see if you see the suffix how this suffix comes is whenever we have the column name which is common across the two data frames other than the one on which we are merging so other than the key column here the any other data column which is common across the two would have a suffix left and right corresponding to the value that we pass here if it do not pass any value it will by default take x and y outer join is a union operation okay so similar to the intersection what it will do is it will take the union of the two sets so it will have all the attributes or all the values in the key a b c d e g i and wherever any value is not present for a corresponding data frame it would be marked as nan okay you can see it here left join left join tries to preserve all the values of the key column in the left data frame and any matching key any matching key attribute on the right data frame so for example here we'll have a b c d e all the keys of the left data frame however only those at uh, those rows wherein on the right we have the matching keys as a c and e will be non null and others would be null okay similarly right join will preserve all the values in the key on the right data frame and any matching on the left would be preserved others would be as nan see a c e g i these are the key values on the right data frame and the ones that are matching on the left are having values while others are having none okay cross join is a cartesian product it will simply take each row on the left data frame and try to match it with all the rows on the right data frame so if you see the number of rows that we would have is because we had 5 on the left 5 on the right we would have 25 rows at the end okay this is fine hope you are getting a sense of what join is now merge is based on this join operation by default the join method which is present in pandas internally uses the merge method okay the concept of merge is taken from the databases which are the inner left right outer cross this concept is used in our merge method for performing any join based on a column matching okay hope this is making sense this is a very useful command very next up we'll see idx max and idx min okay also before that i want to show you one function which is transpose say for example we had a data frame df1 now if we want to interchange the rows and columns of this data frame let's not take df1 it would be too large or cumbersome let's take df2 which is a smaller data frame yeah 100 rows now if i take df2.t t is for transpose let's see what happens if you see the rows would become the columns and the columns would become my rows this is the method or this is the underlying at function of t or transpose capital t idx min and idx max idx min and idx max would i let us first understand idx max idx max would return the index corresponding to the maximum value of a particular column so say for example we had the data frame df okay what was our data frame df okay so data frame df uh, this data frame df has 100 rows 2000 rows and seven columns so for each of these seven columns there would be one value which is the largest corresponding to that value what is the index would be returned for each of the columns if i call df dot idx max let us see what happened here r mass not allowed for this t type okay there is some problem okay so the reason we are having this error is because we are having certain columns which are non numeric types because we cannot have a maximum operation on a non numeric type that is why we are giving getting this error so let us filter it for int memory which are numeric types and the other one say talk time talk time 
now we call this idx max see for int memory okay there what we don't know the maximum value this is the index corresponding to the maximum value the first index that is corresponding to the maximum value for int memory we can check this as let us say what is the maximum for my int memory and talk time what are the maximum values so maximum value for int memory is 64 talk time is 20 just bear with me we'll understand in a moment what idx mean idx max means here so we will take df dot i lock row number 49 see in row number 49 int memory value is 64 which is also the maximum value of int memory in the data frame next up in row number 8 row number 8 so in row number 8 we have a value for talk time which is 20 which is again the maximum value of talk time in our data frame so idx max has returned the index corresponding to the maximum value for a particular column similarly idx min would return an index corresponding to the minimum value okay here let us use idx max and idx min in combination in, in order to return a row having the maximum value of ram okay so maximum value of ram we know is 3998 okay what is the row what is the first row in a data frame which is having this maximum ram value so if i call df ram dot idx max which returns my index value i'll call df dot i lock i lock on top of that index and i get this my memory is 39 touch screen is 1 4g is 1 and my ram is 3998 which is the maximum ram now you understand how idx max works so we will proceed ahead with our assignment questions the first assignment question for this module 3 is you have to find out based on this data set which will also be provided in the description do all 4g phones have 3g and wi-fi included if not what is their distribution by distribution here mean what percentage of 4g phones have 3g and wi-fi both what percentage of 4G phones have only 3G? What percentage of 4G phones have only Wi-Fi? Got it? Okay, this is very simple. You can do it absolutely. Put it down your answers in the comments. Okay. Next question is find the row containing the highest RAM for each price range. So corresponding to each price range, you have to return the row which is having the highest RAM. Got it? This is also very simple. Here an additional hint for you, just a small set of secret. You will need to use the combination of group by, iLock and IDX Max. Therefore, it, this question is a combination of all three modules that we learned so far. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead, attempt the assignment questions. Make sure you hit the like button, press the subscribe button and the bell icon. See you in the next lecture. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.